start. We are going to talk about virtual reality applied to the B2B world business um, and how to get started, but mostly getting uh, uh, knowledge of what is around, what, is what works in this field, how to get started and uh, the an analysis. I'm Fabio Mosca, I work as a virtual reality developer uh, programming, mostly on uh, C Sharp and Unity. I also do some uh, real stuff. Uh, actu actually, I'm the founder of the studio. I'm a lecturer and I'm here to speak, to have a, a speak about virtual reality. Hopefully, I will give you some enjoyment. Uh, some works I I've been working on uh, with uh, another reality. We are behind the development of uh, mixed reality applica banking application where you can literally uh, talk with a 3D avatar and uh, perform banking operations like uh, charging your phone with HoloLens. So if you're wishing to spend uh, 3,000 euros to charge 20 euros on your phone, uh, give me a ring. Then uh, we are working on this uh, escape room, which is in a a movable escape room that we place in uh, some uh, shopping malls, environment, uh, um, entertainment places or uh, events. And this is uh, something we are going to go deep after for uh, the business analysis. As I said today, the summary of this talk is why virtual reality works in the business field, why it works today. Some examples from around the world. There are many of those. I tried to choose some, uh, let's say, different uh, uh, fields. What you need to work to get started in war means which are the technologies and uh, the skill set required. Uh, the escape room, uh, some analysis uh, on where we started, uh, what, we what was our target, uh, and the, the challenges that we had to go through to make it, let's say, profitable. Uh, First of all, here, please, uh, who is a developer here? I mean, uh, that handles some stuff for code, good, uh, your hands. Uh, even uh, artists, graphics people, uh, stuff, uh, okay, or some. Uh, who is uh, from uh, most on the business side, say, so less developer? So, so I guess, like, <laughs> and the other ones, what's the, really? <laughs> oh, you can't really answer right now. Sorry about this. Uh, very well. And before going to this, uh, again, uh, the, the game of hands, who tried the virtual reality? At least once. Well, well, most, most of you. So first of all, I uh, highly advise of who, who doesn't yet have to, uh, who doesn't have tried the virtual reality yet to go upstairs after, give a try to any headset just to, just to understand the the power, let's say, of the meaning, because this talk uh, won't be about uh, why virtual reality is immersive, how to get immersion and stuff. Uh, I will mostly go on uh, practical cases. So funny, funny story, preparing this, uh, this talk a few weeks ago, it was like, uh, let's see why war works in B2B, what Google sta says to me. And as you see, <laughs> most of the, the, s the, the search results are our virtual reality will change, will, may soon be a reality, blah, 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 and stuff, stuff like this. Let's see, will, maybe soon. Hopefully, like, I'm here today to tell you that not will, is already, now, right now, and not even uh, investors and stuff that pour the money, hopefully, in a few years uh, that we, they will come back. It's already profitable. Why? First, it was created for it. And not now, not a few years ago, but officially we, we can say that in the 1968 uh, is the year that uh, the Sword of Damocles was born, which is this fantastic headset uh, that weighs some kilograms and is, uh, is above on the ceiling. It was made for the military, actually. Working in the military with some uh, video, video feedback, with a live camera on the, on the planes uh, to get uh, the sensation. A few years later, Tom Furness worked on the first simulation. That's this, and this one is, is real. Actually, like, that was the graphics of virtual reality back then. 
And this was the already an actual uh, use case working, paid from the government, American government and military, uh, military staff. NASA was a big player in this field. They used the, um, the, um, the Vived, the environment display, to study how to operate uh, some uh, satellites like from remote, like being in virtual reality and try to apply some movements to do some operation, but remotely using an headset. Those were the first research uh, of, uh, of those years. So first step, virtual reality was born for business, paid from the business already back then. Second reason, virtual reality as uh, as we know it today, or at least uh, most of people knows, uh, I'm talking about Oculus Rift that uh, came out in the Kickstart in 2012. And the, the idea of um, Oculus was uh, we are aiming for uh, the gaming market, for, for games and video gamers. But actually, the video games market for consumers doesn't really hold very well. We have uh, some uh, successful cases uh, that maybe repaid some cost or maybe, maybe made some money, but not enough usually to, to justify a big investment that goes only in that field. And mostly because uh, people at home do not always have uh, two or three thousand euros uh, to spend uh, to play in virtual reality. Because uh, you need a good computer, you, go you need a good headset, if you go on the, mm, the headsets uh, that uses mobile, usually you, you are compromising with quality and uh, the, mm, the amount of interaction that you can do or, you can, uh, or how much you can move. Luckily for us, businesses and companies uh, do not have uh, usually this problem. Like uh, 3,000 to 200 and 500, 3,000 euros usually is not so such a big deal for a company. So this usually is a clear the point. The second point is space. I'm talking about uh, room scale uh, experiences, experiences in virtual reality where you have to move, uh, move your hands, maybe do two or three steps, move around. And people at home uh, not always have enough space for this kind of uh, installation. Business usually do does. Also, sometimes is a requirement. There are some applications where uh, you are required to walk around uh, some implants uh, just uh, to check them uh, and be like, yes, cool, it's uh, all okay. And that's something that people uh, usually have to do and they want now to recreate that in virtual reality with the same uh, stuff like walking. So they require very big space, uh, an empty space uh, with sensors and headset to walk and uh, do the training. Then, virtual reality is proven to be more effective in particular fields. Specifically, easy to understand uh, is the learning and training experience. Think about in the 90s, virtual reality was used for, uh, for medical to learn how to not make mistakes while operating uh, a person without sacrificing the person, actually. There are research, even, even not really recent, like she's 2007, that they made uh, some experiments. I cut down this, uh, this part of the paper, but just saying that they made, uh, they made a research for uh, virtual reality training. And um, what came out is like five times more likely to endure the Garbaldo burn who didn't train in war compared to the other ones. Uh, Miners are six times less likely to occur, uh, to occur in, the, in the war. Who trained in war was less prone to mistakes, I remember pretty clearly. Even Google recently made uh, some, uh, some tests with the how to use a coffee machine. That was their, uh, their test. And uh, the test was uh, put people with videos on uh, how to use the coffee machine. And uh, other people were like, uh, here is virtual reality headset, the daydream actually, not very, uh, the, the mobile one. So you couldn't even move so much. Uh, but even, even with that, it came out that who trained in virtual reality did better, less mistakes. 
profit profitable for both fans. I mean, who makes it, of course, get paid for it, and who wants it usually makes profitable because, uh, let's say again, uh, l uh, the training part, if you can cut a lot of costs or increase uh, efficiency or buff, uh, more, uh, more efficiency, less errors for people trained, uh, and uh, you spent less, so you spent uh, something at the beginning for the development, but uh, you gained in uh, less expensive for uh, logistical operation to, organize for to organize, to get trainers. That's again, that's uh, profitable for them. So I want it now. For marketing purposes, this is uh, an image, uh, an old image. Uh, virtual reality is very good for marketing. Why? Because uh, you go to an expo, to a fair, you have a virtual reality stuff, you get a lot of people lined up just because you have an headset there. That's the wow effect that is fading away year by year because uh, it's not more, uh, it's always on the, mm, on the new side. And all that lined people are people that you can talk to them about your product and stuff because they are waiting, so they have n usually nothing better to do. And when they have the headset on, you have uh, their full attention, 100%, not uh, the 10 second attention, uh, the seven second attention span that usually people has uh, before, oh, I got a notification, let me check, yes. Uh, oh, let me check something. No, they are in virtual reality. They are, you have one minute, two minutes of your experience of full attention for them. Disclaimer, I'm uh, on the part who makes the stuff. I can say, <laughs> just in case. Who says it's profitable? not going to bring my personal uh, stuff that I did uh, with my company, but I'm going through worldwide stuff. First. Look here, what you saw now is the training application for KFC worker. KFC is going to train uh, their employees uh, at the end of this year and from the next year using virtual reality how to, f how to fry chicken with this, making them have fun with uh, an escape room-like experience and, and where they have actually to learn the basic stuff of how, how to fry the chicken, how much time time uh, is neither where the stuff is so this is a game but it's about a, bi uh, a business application and is also for marketing because they made uh, some buzz with the uh, with the press and it has actual practical use because they can like track uh, and get performance of the uh, of the people trained other case <laughs> Again, I got some video change problems. Okay. 
Okay, anyone has seen this one before somewhere? Right, one, two, three. Uh, all right, you, you cannot really answer if I do question now. But the, the stuff is, I saw those like in New York, in some museums uh, all around the world. And one of those, this one is made in, uh, from a company from Zurich, actually, is here in Switzerland. One of those costs uh, uh, 160,000 fr Swiss francs each. I mean, to have one. 160,000 French, ask them, actually. I think you can say is quite profitable for them that they made it. It's like a ton of money for just one sale. I think they have uh, something around 50 or 150 units probably all around the world. And museums enjoy it because they continue to keep it and uh, there's high demand. And uh, most of all, uh, you know that uh, the business is uh, profitable and uh, is the reason when the Chinese people copy you, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> Chinese clones. I tried even, no, thi this one I went to visit them and they didn't want me to try it because I tried the, the original one. So they were like, no, you better not try this because you know, it's uh, quite cheap compared. They realized it, but they copied it because they know that it, it worked. So they went on the, on the cheap side. Other case. This one is, uh, is Italian. Oh yeah, I need to do the shopping. Welcome, Anne. What do you need? Hi, Super. I need some pasta. Let's see then. Ah, there it is. Whoops, I almost forgot. Lucy, who's gluten intolerant, is also going to be there tonight. Show me just the gluten-free products, please. Anne, I have activated the gluten filter for this shelf. Okay, I think that's enough. Who knows the... Um, who knows them? Have you ever heard about them before? Like it's an Italian company here in Milan. They raised uh, uh, last year, two years ago, something like uh, six, 600,000 uh, euros of around the uh, around day, and they, they are still going on. I guess pretty good. And if you think uh, what you saw, the, the real value for this is not for the customer at home that is going to have uh, to, to do shopping, but who makes uh, the supermarkets that they can, in virtual reality, plan the supermarkets before and then uh, invite people to test them and see where they look and analyze the data or just to change immediately the, the shelves. Like uh, this, uh, this organization of shelves doesn't work for the people having shopping, so we organize it uh, immediately in virtual reality instead of having to do all the time with a real supermarket and uh, do all the logistic operation. Other business case. At Labster, we have never doubted that immersive virtual reality is going to revolutionize the world. The acquisition of the Oculus Rift by Facebook tells us that we are certainly not alone in this position. But we also believe that virtual reality is about much more than this just a an very old gaming video. experience I mean, and social. 2014, theory. actually. Oh, it stopped again. The future of how we will educate our children and the next generation of scientists to come. Labster has known this for some time now, and that's why we have worked hard to develop. We took the. All right. So, they are called Labster. They are is a Swiss company. Actually, they are going uh, virtual with virtual reality to bring. Uh, let's say chemistry labs, physics labs, and this kind of uh, lear practical learning, but in virtual reality during the lessons in university or in schools. They are not a new company because they started in uh, 2011. And this year, so from 2011 to today, they worked alone, like uh, they got paid by university clients and stuff, and they raise ju just raised like 10 millions, uh, and that's their first round uh, 
to bring this in virtual reality. I mean, to learn, to, to improve the learning in universities. And that's something that they worked for a lot of time. So I know, I know people from them, they have been quite profitable because they have 150 people uh, working for them uh, all around the globe. It's going pretty well. It's a pretty good use in a, uh, business case. Last one, I think, Walmart built a kind of uh, virtual reality training stuff, but using uh, videos uh, with interactive elements uh, to train uh, their employees uh, for uh, unusual situations like Black Friday. So it's like they have uh, 150,000 employees. Uh, not all of them uh, have been through a Black Friday. Also because uh, they don't have, uh, s they not all, all of those employees uh, stays at Walmart for more than one year, actually. There's a lot of change, right? Maybe they have uh, freshmen coming from schools that stays just six months, so it's uh, seasonal work and stuff. Oh, there's the Black Friday, uh, you never tried it before uh, as, a, as an employee, right? Yes, it would be a mess. So what they do? They did uh, this one, a training for them to make them live through this, uh, this moment. And they're going to install this, those uh, virtual reality training suites uh, in uh, kind of 200 locations. And they're planning, they said that they're going to send all their employees uh, in the course of 2017, 2018. It's pretty massive. And it's happening today, not in five years. Uh, hopefully, the investor is going to get back the money. That's it for today for the business cases from uh, around the world. Developers, if you are already um, familiar with this, the software, it will be very quick. Who, who, knew, who doesn't know the software will be quick for you too. What do you need? Hardware. It's pretty easy. You need a computer to work with, and uh, you can choose to go on a uh, cheap part, let's say virtual reality mobile one, using smartphones. You have uh, some choices with Carbor, with Gearvoir, with Daydream. Your pick depends on uh, what you want to do. Or you, want to, you can go to the high-end uh, virtual reality that uses powerful computers uh, and uh, uh, headset connected to the computer. The difference here basically is that with those, uh, con with those headsets you have less power, so less complicated stuff, and uh, you cannot move your head, you can just uh, rotate it. With those ones you can move your hands, you can lean, in some cases you can also walk around, you need more power, you usually are tied to a cable, if not you need uh, an, um, a wireless stuff to place on, uh, on your headset you're going to spend something more. And if you think about uh, mobile development, usually it's not, there isn't very so, so much difference uh, compared to a Mac uh, or uh, having uh, various devices to test on it. Usually it's not it's a big deal. So that's for the hardware. Check. Now you need the software. Programming-wise, uh, those are the two ones that you will need. You can pick one, you can pick both. You can try to go s in some native libraries, but it, it takes a lot more time usually compared to those ones that have uh, are engines that actually are very st uh, streamlined the pipeline to work on there. So Unity and Unreal, both free. C Sharp in the uh, first case, C++ in the second case. Good, you got the software for the programming part. Now you need the skills, right? Now, set aside the video part, the video production stuff. You need the programming. And uh, if you're not very knowledgeable about programming, you can go for with no the programming and just use some uh, tutorials and uh, stuff that is uh, already on the web. Train, train a bit and you can get started pretty quickly. You need the graphics. You need the artistic part. Someone that makes the assets that appears there. You are not an artist, you are not a 3D graphics. First advice, you can get one. Second advice, you can actually still make 
something like this using applications that are already outside and using virtual reality so it's like molding it with your hand great use some uh, basic forms speed up but not by so much then that's it you paint it you add some lights you add some colors and here you go then you are here you like click export you take it in your development environment and you work on it I mean you, you can even sell it as an art this one without being a very uh, a true artist so I guess the skill part is up to you. Now you need time to get the skills or to work on it. This one uh, is a, a, pr a, a prototype game that we, we made uh, internally and it's still a prototype is a showcase uh, on top. Just to give you in the uh, look, the actions or the graphics and everything, think about how much time do you need to make something like this. Think about it now, and you'll get an answer. This prototype is, has been made by three people in three weeks, roughly. Two weeks and a half, three weeks. Just to give you an idea on actually how much time you, d you need to do stuff in virtual reality. It's not very much uh, using uh, the, the software mentioned before. Other resources, Oculus, Unity, Unreal Engine, have, uh, uh, they have a lot of tutorials and resources to grab uh, for free or um, assets to import for few euros. Uh, you can stay up to date with Upload or Road to War, War Focus for uh, all the business that is going around the virtual reality. Very well. To close, the escape room. We started, uh, this is an insight is an uh, analysis of an, uh, our case, so is an insider of what we wanted to do. The idea w for us was to invest three months of development for four people to get something uh, very quick, uh, using being multiplayer, cooperative, uh, easy to use, uh, that lasted five minutes. Why? Because uh, we wanted to bring it to like locations and uh, get paid for ticketing. So like, invite me, I do the ticket, and uh, hopefully I'll get some kind of money. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know if you see well with the, the lights. There are those two, pi two, um, two players that are actually ghosts. They needed to find those uh, those objects and collaborate together to get the other ones. Player have uh, different powers. They needed to cooperate uh, literally with their powers. Challenges that we had: first of all, people uh, in virtual reality do not see their controllers. I mean, their hands. They can see keyboards and stuff. So keeping it simple, we make it. We made it that you just needed to press one button, the grip button, to grab stuff. You do everything by grabbing, nothing else. Second stuff, in virtual reality, no one is able to stop you to put uh, your head uh, like inside a wall, a virtual wall, I mean. Uh, so what we did, like, okay, the player are ghosts. Ghosts is, well, uh, is widely known that they can pass through things. So in virtual reality, 
Okay, you are a ghost, so if your hand goes inside, goes inside uh, some furniture and stuff, it's fine. Time was three months. is not very much for a multiplayer experience, we were starting from design, I mean from scratch, from all the idea. So we, we had some limitations. The idea was, okay, limitation become features. Or uh, in, in jargon, it's like, uh, it's, it's not a bug, it's a feature. We have no time to create a voice chat. Very well. We evolved the design where players cannot talk. They won't be able to talk. Uh, they, they will be put in different environments. But they have gestures on the hand that they can use uh, from the controller, just pressing random buttons to communicate. Just to give you, they can tell. It's like gestures are like, OK, that's the finger, the index finger is the double. I, I dare you to, to get what's the last gesture. Like you act this one, this one, this one. What might be the last one? No, there's not the three. Other guesses? Other guesses? That's the one. That's the one. This one. <laughs> and uh, actually, it's the one most used from, per from people trying. Even if the two people trying to uh, play together do not know each other, at some point they will discover the middle finger and they will be pointing things with the middle finger because they, they found it very fun. <laughs> Business model was uh, like ticketing. We get people paying tickets to try it in uh, some location or from uh, specific places that they were going to, to rent uh, and rebranding. So it's like a particular brand uh, like wants to do some stuff for uh, Halloween, let's say. They pay us to put their brand and to do some other style. Okay, first, first event, we brought the escape room around. Do not mind the, the artist uh, that is happy. On field discoveries after our uh, first massive test, like there was uh, that was a two day with ticketing, uh, with we had uh, like probably 200, uh, 200, 300 people like trying. Actually, the gameplay lasted more than ten minutes for people, not five uh, as we thought before, because the the enigmas for us were we thought were very intuitive, very easy. Actually, people spent a lot of time around uh, when the, they discover something that is hidden there instead of looking around uh, they try all the means uh, to break the stuff in virtual reality they lose uh, a lot of minutes there then there is the of course people that do not communicate or they discover the middle finger they pass fi 10 minutes just sending them uh, in places we discover that the game works pretty well the business doesn't because five euros tickets for a 10 minutes and more uh, experience with two players uh, is not enough uh, to justify the personnel that is running the booth, uh, the space uh, if you have to rent it, the hardware. Even if we own the hardware, let's say hardware rent, uh, hardware fee, we have to consider it. Uh, even going full capacity, I mean, uh, we never stopped for one minute. We, after one player, there was another one immediate, paid and playing was absolutely not holding, changing the business model in this case. So this was uh, too much consumer. Unfortunately, to justify development costs, uh, all, um, the hardware, the, the space, because virtual reality uses spaces for, uh, for this case, you need to go more premium. Without this, OK, we, don't, we do not go anymore for ticketing. We go to sell these. Uh, to event organizers. So event organizer pays, pays us to create entertainment at their location for a day, two days, a week, maybe. And so we, we, we make the math. We were like, OK, we need two people for uh, two location for tot days. We have the hardware for those days, uh, plus some, uh, some margin fee. That's the price. We made the test. With this one, it worked. Actually, worked very well. Next step on this uh, are that we noticed, uh, like using less space uh, that we thought before. The, um, the experience that we thought initially is uh, four meters square, three meters. 
which for some events uh, is reasonable, like they have the space, uh, but we cut off a lot of clients that uh, they didn't have th th that space because it's, sorry, it's four meters square, three meters for one player, but the experience is two players, so you need double this space to run uh, full. So like even finding a way to reduce this, uh, this space uh, means that you can do much more, very a lot, a lot more, even have a double booth with so four player going, uh, going together, selling so for better prices. And of course, an, we need marketing. Like with this one, we need to rebrand uh, and go around. So thi this point, the business, the, the costs and the gains uh, matches, but there isn't, is like an investor w wouldn't be able to throw money to us for this. Uh, hopefully reducing uh, space uh, works. And of course, working on the, on the game to, to increase graphics, change the settings, uh, um, going more mainstream. Like uh, if you brand it, uh, even with marketing, with some uh, kind of uh, looks, uh, doesn't remind you kind of an Harry Potter world. <gasps> Families and child coming to you wants to play there. And the businesses understand you better. Like what is in Seoul? Oh, it's a virtual reality escape room that is a kind of fantastic work, kind of Harry Potter. They hear Harry Potter like, yeah. That's it. That, for, that is mostly for the European uh, and uh, American market. In Asia, they do something like this. That, that, that's a photo that they take. So, to close, you saw some uh, business cases that are, are working, some numbers. Uh, you know also that now virtual reality has uh, literally no limits. There is an interesting mm, claim from uh, one of the Oculus founders that says virtual reality has very high potential because you can think something that is going to be able to be r replicated in virtual reality in a few years. Uh, like if you think about mobile or the Kinect or something, uh, you know pretty well what's the limit of the, f the technology. With virtual reality, you don't yet know what's the limit because there's no more screen. It's like it's your body. You can recreate. You can think in the future that you can recreate all actually anything uh, from real to virtual. Question time. Thank you. <laughs>